Good afternoon and welcome everybody to the session for ergonomics for healthcare workers. My name is Nikki Mathis. I am an HR consultant with Resourcing Edge. A few housekeeping items. Everybody is in listen-only mode. If you would like to ask a question, you can enter that question through the webinar dashboard. You can also contact us at any time. Um, you can contact your HR consultant directly or you can contact us at hr at resourcingedge.com. This session, um, like I said, is the ergonomics training for healthcare workers. It is designed for all employees. On the job, your body has to deal with a variety of stresses and strains that could lead to injuries unless you take proper precautions. For example, your job may involve constant lifting, pushing, or pulling of heavy loads. Or it may involve awkward postures, such as working with your back or neck bent or twisted, or working with your hands above your head while trying to reach and clean high places. You may spend much of your day lifting and moving patients, or your job may involve repetition, doing the same motion over and over for long periods each day, like keyboarding. Any of these activities can lead to injuries that can interfere with your work and your personal life. Today, we're going to talk about ergonomics, which is the study of the job hazards that cause these injuries. During the session, you'll learn about the precautions you can take while you work to prevent this type of injury. The main objective of this session is to make you aware of ergonomic hazards on the job and teach you the precautions you need to take to prevent injuries. By the time this session is over, you should identify ergonomic risk factors in your job, recognize the signs and symptoms of musculoskeletal disorders, or MSDs, lift and carry objects safely, and take other precautions specific to your job to prevent ergonomic injuries. During this session, we'll discuss what ergonomics is and why it's important, what MSDs are and how you could be at risk, symptoms of injuries and what to do about them, safe lifting technique, and ergonomic safety precautions for each task you perform on the job. Let's begin this session about ergonomics by asking two very important questions. First of all, what is ergonomics all about? And second, why should you be concerned about it? Ergonomics is the science of fitting jobs to the people who work in them. In other words, instead of trying to force people to do things on the job that could cause strain and pain, we redesign the job to make it more comfortable and safer to perform. And that's why ergonomics is something you need to know about. Understanding the basic principles of ergonomics will help you work more safely and avoid injuries. That's the goal of ergonomics, to reduce work-related injuries caused by lifting, bending, and all the other physical exertion involved in your job. Have you ever had an injury caused by physical overexertion? Or maybe you know a coworker who has had such an injury. When we talk about ergonomics injuries on the job, we're talking about a very specific kind of injury known as a mus musculoskeletal disorder or MSD. This kind of injury is called musculoskeletal disorder because it involves injury to muscles, including strains and tears, particularly in the back, shoulders and neck, nerves, including pinched nerves in the back and neck, and inflammation of the nerves in the carpal tunnel at the wrist, spinal discs, including herniated discs, tendon and ligaments that con connect muscles to the bones, joints like wrists, elbows, shoulders, and knees, which can become inflamed, and cartilage, the tissue on the ends of bones and around joints that prevent the bones from grinding together and allows joints to move smoothly and painlessly. There are several major MSD risk factors. Repetition, or doing the same motions over and over, puts stress on muscles and tendons. The degree of risk relates to the number of repetitions, the speed of movement, the number of muscles involved, and the required force. Force, or the amount of effort needed to perform a task or maintain control of an equipment and tools, can also put wear and tear on body parts. Awkward postures can also have a harmful effect on muscle groups. Postures that involve repeated or prolonged reaching, twisting, bending, kneeling, squatting, Working with your hands over your head or having to stay in one position for long periods of time can lead to an MSD. Contact stress or pressing body parts against a hard or sharp edge can put too much pressure on nerves, 
tendons, and blood vessels. And finally, vibration from operating some power tools can lead to nerve damage. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the jobs performed in healthcare facilities, MSDs are among the most common types of work injury. For example, housekeeping, laundry, and food preparation and service tasks may include bending, stretching, kneeling, repetitive motions, heavy lifting, and pushing carts and other items. Patient care tasks may include repetitive motions, bending, a lot of standing, lifting and moving patients, and pushing wheelchairs, gurneys, or medical equipment. Maintenance tasks may include repetitive motions, heavy lifting, pushing or pulling motions, awkward reaches, or the use of vibrating tools. Central supply work often involves moving heavy materials, bending, reaching, stretching, and other physical exertions. And office work may include hours on the computer, which means the repetitive motion of keyboarding. Office work also includes a lot of sitting and some bending and reaching as well. Think about the MSD risks involved in your job. Recognizing the signs and symptoms of MSD-related injury helps prevent the problem from getting worse. It allows you to take steps to reduce your exposure and seek early medical treatment. An MSD can cause pain or swelling in a number of parts of the body. The type of pain you experience will vary depending on the type of MSD and the type of injuries you have suffered. For example, you might experience shooting pain or prolonged stiffness in your back and neck. You might have pain, stiffness, or loss of mobility in your shoulders. Arms and legs might feel numb from time to time, or you might experience periods of shooting or stabbing pain and your elbows and knee joints could be painful, swollen, stiff, or sore. Hands and wrists may experience numerous symptoms, including pain, swelling, tingling, numbness, coldness, burning sensation, or loss of strength and coordination. Fingers may also experience a number of MSD-related symptoms, such as severe pain, snapping or jerking movements, loss of mobility, loss of strength, or a loss of feeling sensation. You might experience pain at the base of the thumb. Feet and toes could also develop MSD-related symptoms, such as tingling, numbness, coldness, stiffness, or a burning sensation. Be sure to report any signs or symptoms of MSDs to your supervisor right away and seek prompt medical treatment. The sooner you get treated, the more likely you will be to be, make a complete recovery. Improper lifting is a major cause of back injuries. Let's talk about lifting objects safely to protect your back from pain and strain. First, plan your lift. Check to make sure you can handle the weight. If not, ask for help or divide the load into smaller, lighter parts if possible. Check your route too and make sure there are no obstructions in your path. Next, stand close to the load with your feet spread about shoulder width apart. Place one foot slightly in front of the other for balance. Then squat down, bending the knees, not your waist. Tuck in your chin while keeping your back as straight as possible. Get a firm grasp on the object before beginning the lift. Then slowly begin lifting by straightening your legs. Let your leg muscles, not your back muscles, do the work. Never twist your body during this step. Once the lift is complete, keep the object as close to your body as possible. As the load center of gravity moves away from the body, there's a dramatic increase in stress to your lower back. Carrying and unloading a load correctly can contribute to an injury-free lift. When carrying, make sure you can see over the load. Move slowly, taking small steps. And to turn, move your feet in the direction you want to go. Don't twist your body. When unloading, bend your knees and lower your body with the load. Keep your back straight and let your leg muscles bear the weight. Keep your fingers away from the bottom of the load as you place it down. If you're placing a load on an elevated surface, lower it to the edge, then slide it back. Make sure you routinely practice safe lifting on the job. Carts are used to store and transfer everything from food trays to cleaning supplies to equipment and tools but pushing a heavy cart around and lifting things from it can cause injuries if you're not careful. 
Remember these ergonomic safety pointers when using a cart. Place heavy items and items most frequently used with an easy reach between hip and shoulder height. Remove unnecessary objects to minimize weight. Be sure to balance loads and avoid overloading the cart. Finally, push instead of pulling carts whenever possible. Keep your arms close to your body and push with your whole body, not just your arms. When moving portable equipment, place it on a rolling device if possible rather than carrying it. Avoid obstacles that could cause abrupt stops. When transporting medical equipment such as patient-inserted IV or medication poles, attach the equipment to the wheelchair or gurney or get a coworker to help you move them. This avoids awkward stretching and reaching involved in pushing a wheelchair or gurney with one hand and the freestanding equipment with the other hand. Also, when handling oxygen tanks, use small cylinders with handles whenever possible to reduce weight and allow easier gripping. Be sure to secure oxygen tanks to the transport device. Working with liquids presents ergonomic hazards because liquids are often heavy and awkward to manage. That's why when filling or emptying containers, you need to take precautions to prevent straining your back and other muscles. Housekeepers should use buckets with casters to move a mop, bu mop bucket. Use a hose to fill buckets. Make sure casters are maintained and roll easily. Use proper lifting technique when tipping or lifting buckets to empty them or get help emptying a bucket if it's too heavy for you to safely handle alone. Working with liquids presents ergonomic hazards to kitchen workers as well. Kitchen workers should use proper lifting and carrying techniques when handling large, heavy pots and pans filled with soups and other liquids. Use an elevated faucet or hose to fill large pots with water. Use a ladle or small saucepan to empty liquids from pots to avoid heavy lifting. And when you must lift or shift a heavy pot full of liquid, get help. Whether you're using hand tools for work in the kitchen, housekeeping, laundry, maintenance, or some other task, you must select the right tool for the job to prevent injury. Make sure the handle of the tool fits your grip. Use a firm but comfortable grip and change your grip from time to time. Choose the lightest tool possible for the job. Select tools that have minimal vibration or vibration dampening devices. And keep tool blades sharp. Whether you're handling heavy laundry, trash, or other bags, you need to be careful not to place unnecessary stress and strain on your body. Use a cart or other materials handling device to help you transport bags to their destination. Slide bags on and off carts to avoid heavy lifting and get help lifting or shifting large, heavy bags to put them down a chute or into a dumpster. If you work in the laundry, you must follow the advice in the previous slide about handling heavy bags, and you must also be especially careful when loading or unloading laundry from washers and dryers, and when using other laundry equipment. Handle only a few items at a time. Brace your body against the front of the machine when lifting. If items are knotted in the machine, Brace with one hand while using the other to gently pull the items free. And place items onto a cart rather than picking up baskets or bags of soiled linen or wet laundry. Housekeeping tasks present numerous ergonomic hazards. Be sure to follow these recommendations to avoid injury. Use carts to transport supplies or make a couple of trips so that you carry only small quantities and waste of supplies at a time. Avoid bending and twisting while cleaning. Alternate physically stressful tasks with lighter tasks. Clean objects at waist level if possible rather than bending over them. For example, raise beds to waist level before making them or push wheelchairs of a ramped platform to clean or repair. When dusting, use a flathead duster and push with the leading edge. When using spray bottles, work the trigger with your index and middle fingers, not your ring and little fingers. When using cleaning implements such as mops and brooms, avoid a tight, motionless grip. Alternate the leading hand from time to time. Frequently change styles when mopping from push-pull to figure eight to rocking side to side to alternate stress on muscles. When sweeping, sweep all areas into one pile and pick debris up with a vacuum. 
use extension handles, step stools or ladders for overhead work, and to reach low or hard to reach spots. Wear knee pads when kneeling. Use chemical cleaners and abrasive sponges to minim minimize scrubbing force. And when vacuuming, avoid a tight static grip. Change your grip from time to time and alternate hands. If you spend a lot of time sitting while working, it's important to understand proper sitting posture to reduce strain on your back. Sit up straight with your feet flat on the floor and your knees bent. Lean your back against the back support. Use a cushion for added back support if necessary. Keep your chair close to your desk or work surface. Turn with your whole body. Don't twist only your trunk. And hold paperwork upright. Don't lean over to read. Adjust your chair and work surface if possible to give you the most comfortable position. Arrange your work area to minimize reaching and bending. Position your computer monitor with the screen top slightly below eye level. Maintain a neutral position when keyboarding so that you don't have to bend your wrists. And finally, be sure to change positions frequently and get up and move around from time to time to move and stretch your muscles. Back injuries are among the most common health problems for healthcare workers. Because you do so much lifting and bending in your job, you have to be careful of your back. So remember these back safety tips. Always wear sturdy shoes with non-skid soles on the job. Practice good posture when you stand and sit. Keep your back straight. Get regular exercise, including back and abdomen strengthening exercises like crunches and sit-ups. Sleep on a firm mattress and get enough rest. Try to keep your weight down to keep pressure off your back. And don't overestimate your strength or overexert yourself. Get help lifting and carrying objects. It's also important to pay attention to what your body is telling you. Never ignore back problems or other ergonomic injuries. They'll probably only get worse. Tell your supervisor if you have an injury or symptom of an MSC. Seek medical treatment right away. Don't delay. The sooner you get treated, the better the chance for a complete recovery. If you have regular back problems or some other chronic physical ailment, follow your doctor's advice on ways to relieve the pain as well as to relieve additional strain. Do you understand the information presented in the previous slides about preventing ergonomic injuries while performing a variety of different tasks? It's important for your safety in the job that you understand this information and practice the safety precautions we've discussed. Now let's conclude the session by re-emphasizing the importance of taking care of your back. Here are the main points to remember from this session on ergonomics for healthcare workers. Make sure you can recognize MSD symptoms. Be aware of the ergonomic risk factors in your job. Take proper precautions to prevent injuries. And finally, report any MSD symptoms immediately and seek medical treatment. This concludes the Ergonomics for Healthcare Workers training session. If you have any questions, please enter those now into the webinar dashboard. As there are no questions, I will conclude this session. If you have any questions at a later date, please contact your HR consultant or hr at resourcingedge.com. Thank you for your time and have a good rest of your day.